Welcome back to Brand You Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. On Sunday, United States Special Operations Forces carried out an evacuation of the U.S. Embassy in the Northeast African country of Sudan. The evacuation took place due to a battle between two Sudanese commanders that forced the main international airport in the country to close and left roads out of the country in control of armed fighters. As the final embassy employee left the capital, the Special Operations Forces left behind thousands of private American citizens. U.S. officials said it would be too dangerous to carry out a broader evacuation operation. About 100 troops carried out the operation that airlifted roughly 70 American employees from a landing zone at the embassy to an undisclosed location in Ethiopia. The operation was complete within an hour. No shots were fired and no major, major casualties were reported. Last Friday, the Supreme Court weighed in on controversies surrounding access to mifepristone, the medicine used for abortions. The justices granted emergency requests from the Biden administration and New York-based Danko Laboratories, the maker of the medicine, to appeal a lower court ruling that would roll back FDA approval. The court's action Friday will leave access to unchanged access unchanged at least into next year as appeals play out. President Joe Biden praised the high court for keeping the Fepristone available while the court battles continue. Biden said in a statement, quote, the stakes could not be higher for women across America. I will continue to fight politically driven attacks on women's health, end quote. Any appeal to the Supreme Court would follow within three months of a ruling, but with no deadline for the justices to decide whether to review the case. Early Sunday morning, nine teenagers were shot at an after-prom party in the Midwest town of Jasper, Texas. While the number of shooters is unclear, the victims were taken to two separate hospitals and none of the reported wounds were life-threatening. The victims ranged in age from 15 years old to 19 years old. Jasper School District Superintendent John Siebold said in a statement, quote, There will be a much larger law enforcement presence this week to ensure student safety as well as counselors on hand for any student who needs their assistance, end quote. On another note, Massachusetts state health officials have released data that shows Boston's COVID wastewater data is continuing to drop. Data from the Boston Public Health Commission's Wastewater Surveillance Program shows that the number of COVID particles in the city's wastewater has plunged by over 25% this past week. It was announced just last week that the wastewater testing program will expand its surveillance in May for another common illness, the neurovirus. Mariana Mattis, the CEO of BioBot Analytics, said, quote, Wastewater monitoring provides equitable and inclusive data that can help public health officials prepare and respond more effectively to outbreaks, end quote. While the state isn't reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On April 20th, newly released metrics show that over 41,000 molecular tests were conducted and 1,242 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of April 18th, 273 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 29 are in the ICU. 15 new deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. If you're 50 or older, it's important to stay up to date on COVID vaccines. Boosters greatly reduce your chance of severe illness, hospitalization, and death, and are an important defense. Even if you've already had COVID, schedule your appointment today at mass.gov slash COVID booster. Welcome back. During school vacation this past week, the Flaherty Elementary School was the backdrop of an extensive training drill. Braintree first responders practice active shooter training at the school in hopes that they never have to use it. Deputy Chief Michael Want of the Braintree Police Department said, quote, We don't want to ever look back after an incident and say, why didn't we invest time and resources into this training? Each year, the department holds these drills at a different school and has also used area businesses as backdrops. Everyone from dispatchers to the fire department play a part. 
The gear used during the incidents, plus the kind of training with police, is something officials feel puts the department and community ahead of the curve. Continuing the fight for a fair contract, Braintree teachers and other school staff members marched to deliver a letter to Town Hall regarding their contract. The Braintree Education Association delivered a letter to Mayor Charles Kokoris's office, signed by almost all of the union's 635 members. The previous contract expired seven months ago. The union is seeking a 10% raise over three years, but the town is offering a 7% raise. The Braintree Education Association posted on Facebook saying, quote, An incredible day as we marched and delivered a signed petition from our membership requesting that Mayor Kokoris work with the BEA to finally settle a fair contract. It's now been 223 days, end quote. The town of Braintree began their annual flushing program on April 10th. Officials say that residents may experience dirty water during this period and ask for your patience and understanding during the process. The hours of flushing will be from 8 p.m. until 12 a.m. Monday through Thursday and should have a minimal effect on the water distribution system. Signs will be posted on main streets in the area where the flushing will occur. Town officials also ask that residents should refrain from doing laundry during these hours and always check to ensure that your water is running clear before resuming laundry activities. The Town of Braintree notes it will not be responsible for damages to laundry due to this necessary maintenance work on the water distribution system. The program plans to be completed by the end of August. America Chorus has announced that the return date for Braintree's annual Beautification Day is April 29th. Residents will gather at Braintree Town Hall at 8 a.m. for location suggestions and to collect materials like rakes, bags, and work gloves. Kokoris said in a statement that he, quote, looks forward to the event every year. Beautification Day is a great opportunity for our entire community, both residents and businesses, to come together to show our pride in our town's beauty and appeal, end quote. This year's target areas include the Town Hall, Memorial Mall, the grounds of the Braintree Historical Society, the Beach and Park at Sunset Lake, Peniman Park on Cleveland Avenue, Smith Beach, and the Braintree High School Access Road. In the event of inclement weather, Beautification Day will be moved to May 6th. Residents with questions can call the Mayor's Office at 781-794-8100 or the Recreation Office at 781-794-8901. He was a star player on the Braintree High School basketball team. Now Nick Timberlake is heading to Lawrence, Kansas to suit up for one of the premier programs in college basketball this fall. Nick entered the transfer portal as a graduate transfer after a highly successful career at Townsend University. Last week, he announced he'd be joining the University of Kansas. Timberlake graduated from Braintree High School in 2017 and attended Kimball Union the following year, where he was selected to the Class AA All New England Prep School Athletic Council team. As a redshirt freshman in 2019, he was named Colonial Athletic Association's Sixth Man of the Year, beginning his rise into a prominent role at Townsend. He is the 29th player in Townsend history to hit the 1,000 point mark and his 1,522 make him the 8th leading scorer in program history. Timberlake became the career leader in three-pointers made and attempted this season. Spring sports are back in action at the high school. Here's Mike Wassel with a look at the most recent games. Braintree and Weymouth in boys volleyball and it's the Womps with an early spike to take the lead here in set number one and already convincingly up by seven. Another spike as Braintree gets another point and then win the first set here on another kill as Braintree wins 25-17 in set one and Weymouth able to bounce back with a couple of key points here, a block and a kill. And now the finishing touch on a kill in front to tie it at one set each and then in set number three. Braintree trying to bounce back and they're able to do so in a fine fashion with a couple of blocks at the net and then Braintree starting to assert themselves with some strong hitting as they are able to win the third set here with another nice little 
Q shot is Braintree now with a two set to one lead and trying to finish off Weymouth here in four sets and Braintree with a block and then the ball up and off the top of the stanchion as Braintree wins the fourth set and wins three sets to one over Weymouth. Moving on to baseball, it's Braintree and Weymouth in baseball as well. And a pop-up on the infield should be a routine play, but the wind plays with it, and it's dropped as Braintree gives up a run here. It does get the force out, but it's a one nothing lead for the Wildcats, and they score again here in the second inning as they have a 2 nothing lead, and then a base hit makes it a 3 nothing game here in the second inning as Braintree now walking in a run here in the third to make it a 4-0 lead for the Wildcats, and they add on an insurance run in the seventh to make it a 5-0 game, and the final out coming on a line drive, a nice catch over at shortstop as Braintree drops this one to Weymouth 5-0. Baseball again later in the week. This is Braintree and Walpole as the Timberwolves get a run on a nice hit down the left field line to take a 1-0 lead and then a costly mistake here on a ground ball to shortstop. A two-run, as it turns out to be, error as it's a 3-0 lead here in the first inning. And funny enough, this is all the scoring that we saw here until the fifth inning as the ball is thrown away and Braintree gets on the board. A throwing error makes it 3-1 and then a home run here in the sixth as Braintree makes it a one-run game as Fitzgerald goes yard. It's 3-2 as we head into the seventh inning and Braintree with two runners on. A good opportunity, but a ground out and a force out at third ends the ball game here in the seventh and Braintree drops their second game of the week, 3-2 to Walpole. Thanks, Mike, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Every home needs a basic emergency supply kit. It should meet the unique needs of the people who live there. Your kit doesn't have to cost a lot. You probably already have many of these supplies, and you can get others at a discount store. Visit mass.gov slash be prepared. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into more stories. Legislators seem to be planning on revisiting a proposal allowing Massachusetts residents to purchase their lottery tickets from virtual scratchers to in-state drawings online. The virtual lottery was first proposed by Treasurer Deb Goldberg in 2019, who declared that if the state approved online sports betting, then the lottery should be available virtually as well. Governor Maura Healey has indicated that she backs the move to expand the lottery's reach in Massachusetts. Healey said that putting state games of chance onto digital platforms would ensure equal footing with sports wagering. Cohasset murder suspect Brian Walsh was back in court on Wednesday after relatives accused Walsh of stealing money and items from his father's estate, who died previously in 2018. Walsh was brought into court to address the claims that he destroyed his father's will in order to reap the profits of selling his property and home. Relatives allege that Walsh went into his father's hull home and destroyed his will, then proceeded to sell his father's art, rugs, jewelry, a car, and that he was attempting to sell the home as well. Walsh appeared in probate court via Zoom without a lawyer and was told his counsel withdrew from the case in March. Though Walsh said he was unaware he wouldn't have a lawyer and stated, quote, I'm not in any position to make any decisions without the assistance of a lawyer, end quote. The probate matter is scheduled for a trial in November. According to Quincy Police, Michael Campbell is facing multiple charges in connection with a Quincy home invasion in which multiple people were stabbed and gunshots were fired. Responding officers found four people inside the home, three of whom were injured. Detectives were able to determine that multiple people were stabbed during the home invasion, but none of the victims were shot. Police said all of the victims suffered non-life-threatening injuries and have since been released from hospital care. The initial investigation suggests the home invasion was specifically targeted and that there is no continued threat to the area. Campbell remains in police custody and will be arraigned in Quincy District Court on charges of home invasion, armed assault to murder, second, of, second offense of carrying a firearm without a license, subsequent offense of carrying a firearm without an FID card, discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a building, and possession of, an ammuni of ammunition without an FID card. 
Last week, staff from the Derby Street Shops management company reported to Hingham Police that they received a threatening voicemail regarding a pride flag displayed outside. The caller, Gage Scammell of Weymouth, threatened he was going to go to the Derby Street Shops, shoot the pride flag down with a rifle, and burn it if it was not taken down within three days. Hingham police were able to identify the caller and later charged Scammell with one count each of bomb and hijack threat with serious public alarm, threatening to commit a crime, and attempted civil rights violation. At his arraignment on April 13th, Hingham District Court Judge James Byrne found Scammell to be dangerous and released him on personal recognizance with conditions of release, including to not drink alcohol or carry weapons. Scammell is due back in court on June 7th. April is known as Autism Awareness Month, and in recognition, the nonprofit Raising Hearts is partnering with the Cohasset Police Department to educate the public and help raise money for the nonprofit, which provides mentoring and other services to South Shore families of neurodivergent children. And in, an increasing number of police departments, such as Cohasset, are now carrying sensory kits on patrols to help provide comfort and assistance to people with autism who experience hypersensitivity to strong stimuli that some service calls can cause due to bright lights, sirens, and the overall anxiety-inducing situations. The kits include noise-canceling earmuffs, light sensitivity glasses, stress-reducing fidget toys, and weighted blankets. In addition to Cohasset, Hingham, Weymouth, Hull, and Hanover will also participate in Autism Awareness Month through the sale of special patches in exchange for donations. For more information, you can visit raisinghearts.org. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Want a year of no cost birth control with just one trip to the pharmacy? Access, a Massachusetts law, can make it easier. Get more control over your birth control. Find out if you're covered. Learn more at mass.gov slash birth control. Welcome back to Brainty Today. This week in entertainment, we have two movies and a show recommendation for you to watch. First up in entertainment, Beef is a mini is a mini series that follows two strangers who get into a road rage incident. The incident sets the characters on a path of mutual destruction as they set out to get revenge on one another. The show stars Steven Yun and Ali Wong. You can watch Beef now only on Netflix. Next up in entertainment, Evil Dead Rise begins with a reunion between two estranged sisters, but the reunion is cut short with the rise of flesh possession possessing demons. The characters must battle for survival as they face the most nightmarish version of family imaginable. The film stars Alyssa Sutherland and Lily Sullivan. You can watch Evil Dead Rise now only in theaters. Finally in entertainment, The Pope's Exorcist follows Father Gabriel Amorth, who is the chief exorcist for the Vatican. The Pope's Exorcist paints a detailed portrait of a priest who performed more than 100,000 exorcisms in his lifetime. The film is loosely based off of the writings of the real-life Father Gabriel Amorth, who served as an exorcist for the Diocese of Rome. You can watch The Pope's Exorcist now only in theaters. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.